Yeah, all good. Nice. How are you? Good, good. And you? I'm good, I'm good. You're in your studio right now? Yeah, yeah. Nice, I can see your paintings uh, behind you. Yeah, no, working on one. What are you working on currently? Pardon me? What are you working on? Uh, it's a painting in the collection Make the World Great Again. Okay, yeah, yeah. there's a few yeah. ones in a, in a question I included, actually. I remember yeah. these. Pretty, yeah. pretty exciting, nice. Uh, so is it like a new... Uh, is it going country by country, the, the make the world great again? Um, no, I'm mainly focusing <clears throat> on uh, China and America mm -hmm. uh, because they are, the, they are the two who, at the end of the day, uh, have the real power in the world, right? Mm. Yeah. So they make the difference. That is true. And coming into the future as well. Yeah. China gaining power and, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's at good least for the next... Uh, 20 30 years then india will mm. pick up at one point mm. then maybe then you will be doing one on india as well <laughs> exactly that's when we will add it <laughs> good um yeah many thanks for accepting the invitation to be interviewed uh it's a great great pleasure uh really nice work i uh, really admire it and just watch the last faust and it was a really stimulating movie yeah <laughs> I think following the following the book itself i i haven't read the book but it really made me uh want to revisit it because i think i i uh, read parts of it or something but it was a long time ago in school but now i'm thinking it's a really um a relevant piece that if we should all reread re yeah no definitely we just launched the film this week in uh German, so synchronized or dubbed version in German. In Dusseldorf, we launched it, which worked out really nicely. And uh, um, Faust, in particularly the second part, is very, very interesting because it's very rich. Goethe wrote on it more than 30 years. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, the, the total play takes about 13 to 14 hours to be played, which means it has been very rarely done. Yeah. So my objective when I started the project was to say I need to, to somehow concentrate the whole story on less than two hours mm. yeah, so that it becomes something which is halfway digestible for the normal uh, uh, listener or viewer. And because there is very few people who are willing to go through 14 hours of theater, right? Yeah, that would have to be that would have to be series, or if if not a movie on Netflix or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a start to uh, to do this as well at some point. That would be interesting. Uh, I mean, considering the uh, the um, you know the Silicon Valley and everything of this sort being involved, it's very currently um like trending in the culture in the pop culture so that would be very really interesting uh source like material for something of a series as well again like yeah. 14 hours yeah. that's no, all all possible and okay i i guess we jumped a little bit but i can maybe go into the first questions um i wanted to ask you um how are you introduced to art because your practice is so varied so i was wondering what was the fir your first memories with like artistic memories maybe or just like the introducement? Yeah, no, I think I had as a child I had two talents. One was uh, painting and the other one was mathematics. And mm -hmm. uh, so I did a lot of painting as a child. And I think the, the first uh, painting I remember uh, was when uh, Kennedy died. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did the painting because it impressed me. We at the time had black and white TV and every program was talking about Kennedy. And so it impressed me. So I did a painting in, uh, of a big grave and, uh, mm. and uh, yes, yeah, so that was my first, first one I, I remember. So I did a lot and did a lot of little art competitions as a child. And then uh, when I um, did my abitur after baccalaureate, after that I wanted to study art um, and I applied in Berlin. And uh, what I didn't know is that they required 
a full portfolio, which I didn't have. Mm. Uh, two weeks to get a full portfolio done, which obviously didn't work, including <laughs> sculpture and paintings, oil paintings. I had never done an oil painting, never done a sculpture before. Mm. And um, so, yeah, basically I failed. And then, uh, uh, yeah, then came into other directions. And then I picked up art. I did art always on the side and then uh, started really getting immersed into it when I came to London in 2012 and uh, basically did art uh, uh, for 60 hours a week and my job for 60 hours a week, so it was quite intense. And then at one point, that was 2014, mm -hmm. I had to decide I have two options. Option one is I continue with my business job and do art on the side. Option two is I dedicate myself fully to art. And I said, uh, why why not risk it, right? Why not go for it? And I uh, yeah, decided yeah. then to go full time into art in 15. And that's what I'm doing since. Mm, that's amazing. Actually, um... I'm quite interested in the the first painting because it, how old were you? Like around what Four. was the age? Four. Yeah. Seriously, that's that's a really interesting topic for a for a four year old uh, being mm. inspired by uh, like the death of a um, you know famous person or uh, like a you know ce political celebrity. That's you you would think that the f you the first painting you might remember would be some sort of I don't know trees or <laughs> family, but being introduced in, in a, this way, introducing yourself to art that way, it's that's that's pretty uh, unheard of, I think. If you yeah. think about it, that's and now seeing the connection between that the first painting and what you're doing now in art you know tackling the uh, political scene uh, the cultural um uh, phenomena it's 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 interesting to see that it links so uh, like deeply going so so much back in time yeah i mean uh, for me art is really translating messages like mm. ideas political messages or cultural ideas or things uh, into uh, the painting, right? So I'm, in that sense, a little bit different from some painters who is, for them, it's more art is an organic type of expression of a, of a feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. For me, it's more cerebral, so I'm more message-oriented. Message mm. Do you think there's also a a part of you that um, you know do it only for this um, organic way of you know expressing yourself, or it's you know just like focus. You're solely focusing on what's the message behind my art and what is going to be. Uh, what what's the message going to uh, be like in the future and where is going to go? Yeah, and I think if if I look at my practice, uh, everything is about stories, messages. Mm. And uh, okay. there might be here and there an odd one, which is not, but that's probably just uh, a bit of training or something. Mm. But it wouldn't be me. Mm. I understand. And how was it? How was it with uh, going from your? Uh, could you say like a day job? I found out that you were like a um, CEO of a of company was it vodafone or something of this sort yeah a few I was companies at, yeah yeah i was looking at your art and then i found out when i google when i started researching you as an artist i found out this and i was um yeah i was that was quite interested in how it must be for an artist to perform these uh roles the the thing is more that uh your your work is a bit the result of your experiences in life mm. right and so in that sense, the work influences, uh, my prior work influences my current work. Um, and uh, um, But at one point, I decided for a clear cut. Mm. There had, had to be, be the, yeah. Yeah. There had to be this uh, final moment of uh, cut off. Yeah. But I mean, it's uh, it's always there is never a, 
a, a risk, right? If I decided to go back two years later, then I would have gone back. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So it's not like uh, I'm not jumping off a cliff. I'm jumping off a cliff <laughs> with a with a, a bungee rope, right? Okay. So um, maybe speaking about the experimentation, um, wanted to ask in a what in what way it informs your creative process? Because as I said previously, uh, your art in general is as a very vast spectrum of uh, artistic projects you're involved in, like, you know, sculpture, painting, movie making. Um, so I'm curious what drives this need to create in so many different um, ways. Yeah, I think uh, I really got uh, into trying out very different directions uh, when I did the uh, Faust project. And the thing which interested me was uh, how different is what you create uh, based on the medium you're using. Right? Mm. Uh, so I did like I um, I did a complete uh, illustration of Faust in uh, watercolors. I did it in photographs and drawings and. Uh, uh, oil paintings and then a, a little book. And then a film, and uh, and I, I found that quite and sculptures, and mm -hmm. I found that quite interesting to see the differences, right, between each one because you have a medium which lends itself to certain things, so you kind of let if you open your mind for it, you discover new ways of looking at the same topic, and I found that interesting. And the other thing I find in, uh, found interesting is simply to get to a point where you start mastering another medium and mm -hmm. uh, so where you start getting good at it. Like, for example, the probably the most difficult one is uh, watercolors. But if you, like I did uh, 40 uh, finished paintings and on the way I threw away 15, uh, but once you have done 55, paintings, uh, you are pretty good at it. But right? so you uh, you have learned the tricks uh, of the of the trade, if you want, or the medium. And um, so so if you put the emphasis on it, you can really get good at a certain medium. And I and I'm still in that sense a bit a traditional artist because I, I like to uh, create things myself instead of asking other people to realize my ideas. Mm. <laughs> so I believe in an artist needing to be in, an artisan as well. Mm. So how was it in uh, in making of the uh, Last Faust? Um, it, you probably had to... I was reading some of your um, interviews on the production of it. You had to work with a quite a large crew, even for like this niche movie. So how was it in, in terms of, you know, fulfilling yourself artistically, solely? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, basically it's like a managing a big project. So mm. you uh, you have a team of forty people who you don't know. So you need to make sure you select the right people, and then they need to perform without knowing each other as a team over a period mm. of three weeks, mm. um, yeah. which is uh, a challenge. Uh, and but I have done that a lot before in my business life, so it was not like something I said it's mm. it scares me. Uh, mm. And uh, um, but you need to make sure you get the right skills, and that's really the important one. Mm. So the right actors, but also the uh, we got a very good film director, a German guy who did mainly uh, car commercials, but very uh, but was himself. A designer uh, from his education, so very good in in understanding uh, forms and colors and uh, um, and these things. So, so you need to find the right people and uh, and then manage basically the manage the process, right? Mm -hmm. So the right people means you need to find the guy who does the lighting properly. You can't do that yourself, but then he has to tell you for that room you need that and that in in uh, in lights and in uh, uh, batteries and in cables and in all kind of things, right? Yeah. So that's something you need to to find a good team.
we didn't really have a plan B. Uh, so we, if somebody had, had gotten sick or there had been a strike, uh, then our, our whole thing would have uh, yeah, not worked, right? Because everything was scheduled. We had three shoots a day uh, in f a film and three shoots in the next studio in photo. So people were working really hard. Uh, but we had, because we did it so concentrated, we only had a limited amount of takes per scene. Uh, so everything needed to work out properly, otherwise <clears throat> you would run afterwards in a problem. You need to get everybody back and so on and so on, which would be very, very expensive and difficult. And how long was the project in, in total? How long did you spend um, filming it? The filming is three weeks. That was, that was down here in London? In London, yeah, in two big studios mm. and Park Royal. Yeah. Then, yeah, it, was, it, it was like two massive studios next to each other. The mm -hmm. challenge was that because it, uh, we did a film and a photo production in parallel, which uh, nobody normally does, mm -hmm. uh, we had to decide to either go into film studios or into photo studios. So we decided to go for photo studios because they were bigger and easier to, to work with. The only problem was that uh, they are not soundproof. So when mm -hmm. there was a plane passing by, you needed to, to make a break or so. Or yeah. if the ice ice man came around the corner, <laughs> then you had to buy quickly ice and tell him to go go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, like here where I am currently, there are some trains. So I hope it, they don't disturb the audio, but uh, yeah, it's also not a soundproof uh, environment. <laughs> no. And so regarding the uh, the project itself, you said that, I mean, and your practice, you said that uh, you like to see uh, the difference of approaching the same kind of, um, you would say, topic in different mediums. Is this project itself, the the Faust, the, the you know, the um, following the Faust, um, the God, Goethe's um, writing, is it closed or you, you still consider it as an open project so you might expand into different mediums? No, in principle, the project is closed now. So it was a four-year project. Mm. And uh, um, so now I'm uh, basically working on, on new new topics. Uh, but not on uh, on Faust anymore. Mm, okay. So it's more right now, like as we are launching it in Germany. So I'm spending time on it, but it's now more on the making it uh, known to the public mm. uh, than, uh, than anything else. Yeah. Mm, amazing. I actually had another question regarding the uh, the last Faust itself. Um, and I've read in some of your interviews that one of the reasons for choosing the uh, the Faust tragedy as your the the canvas for for yourself um, was the the aforementioned relevance uh, relevance to the twenty first century. And could you elaborate a little bit on on that relevance and maybe um, expand where that was you know. What what draw your attention was mainly the technological pursuit or mix of technological pursuit with the um, I don't know religiosity and uh, or maybe the strife for the everlasting youth in the pop culture. Did you have like a um, a focus in in this? Um... No, no, I think I think the genius of Goethe was um, that he described uh, uh, the most human of humans. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and we always think we are modern, right? And we are different, um, but we are not. Mm. And uh, uh, the, the people at the time were the same as we are now. If you describe the, not the fat, but if you describe the core of, of the human being, right? So the this uh, Faustian pact with the devil is something we did in the time we are doing today. And it's even more relevant today because with technologies uh, like AI and others, we are simply now adding a lot of pacts in parallel, which uh, 
simply increases the risk of something going really wrong for the human uh, uh, human race, right? Mm. And, uh, but but all the stories are simply deeply human and false. It's like, for example, the Gretchen story is an uh, older, powerful man who uh, uh, basically uh, 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 convinces a 14-year-old girl to have sex with him, right? And then afterwards, did you so? So it could be a more Weinstein type of uh, setting at the time, right? So, so uh, or they're talking about money printing, which is something the Medici's have done, or others have done, and we just went through another phase uh, right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and notice, oops, there is no free lunch. If you print a lot of money, there is inflation coming. What a surprise. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, so all these topics are somewhere in there. Uh, but because he focused on the most important topic of the human core, uh, you just have to put a modern label on them, and then off you go. You are absolutely in modern times. Mm. Yeah. So he didn't focus. His his play is has nothing to do about a time, uh, and and he himself frees himself of time in his play which makes it a bit confusing for the uh, viewer because you you jump from Greek mythology over the uh, the war uh, about uh, Greece to the beginning of the German Reich to uh, yeah to any different different uh, period mm -hmm. and so he constantly is back and forth in history but why because uh, he is independent of history with his own story and messages. Yeah. Like, um, very timeless. It's a very profound idea to kind of ponder on the fact that we are the same as people from thousands and thousands of years ago. We really like to, uh, like, historically detach ourselves from, from the past, but... Even if you, even if we go back a little, just a tiny bit, to, I don't know, twenty century, the the horrors of the twenty century, we think we think about them as as you know history that will never happen again. But it's so so close in time, uh, historic historically, and yeah, people have this tendency to forget about uh, our true nature. And yeah. uh, no, and then there is a, a interesting book I read. Years ago, as I'm German, uh, it was written, I forgot the name of the author, but it, uh, the title is translated The Ugly Germans. And, mm -hmm. uh, and basically, it, it described Germany from the view of the neighbors uh, since beginning of uh, writing, on, uh, which was like pre-Roman. And uh, the interesting thing was it hasn't changed. Mm. It's still the same. Yeah. yeah actually, you... actually, in uh, I'm from Poland, and uh, in Poland, the the name for it's like a wide. It's like a normal normal way of saying uh, like Germany, which is um, Niemcy, and the the name itself derives. If you go back to the to the origin of 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 wording, it's basically saying that. Those who 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 can't speak <laughs> because we we couldn't understand each other. So it, it's really it's really funny to look at the prisms of of how different country per, perceive uh, yeah. the neighbors for for whatever reasons. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. So so I think the beauty and that's why uh, it's definitely worth reading Faust. Hmm. Um, and uh, it's it's simply. Uh, there are few, very few authors who really hit the nail of the core of the human and mm. good at it, and which yeah. is why it will be as relevant today as in 200 years as it was mm. 200 years ago. Yeah, a lot of German writers actually uh, were really good at it, Nietzsche or, and, and others as well. So there is yeah. something really... Uh, really deeply engraved in the culture of uh, understanding these um these issues i guess yeah yeah 
um yeah actually closing on the on the faust i wanted to ask you if you had to choose one form of art and have to stick for stick with it for the rest of time basically what would it be there was like yes, a oil um, painting oil painting oil why painting. is it yeah i like the i love the colors and i think it's a pretty easy medium mm. so it's very relaxing if you make a mistake like i just uh, did a mistake in one painting and then i uh overpaint right and correct mm. that's true L use a little bit of a terpentine and just like smudge it out and, not, even, uh, not even just not even that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah acrylics are a little bit more um annoying they they just like set in an in instant and just fight with it and yeah. oils are as, as you said way more kind of forgiving yeah that's that's nice um so speaking of pop culture um what is it that you're trying to showcase in your paintings maybe the one even one behind you or the rest of the um make the world great again and all of the or maybe also the ones that where you sh showcase the um the pop cultural icon is it do you have like a message you'd like your art to have um to carry into the future or is it just pointing out those things that you notice yeah no i think it's um i think art overall for me has a, a message and uh, often a political message mm -hmm. and uh, and i just think it's important to raise issues and uh, like for example make the world great again it's it's raising the issue that we have in particular the superpowers have this responsibility and we should take it seriously yeah um, and uh, we need to be uh, careful of people who take these claims or words or uh, sentences and pervert them to their own uh, uh, benefit right mm -hmm. um, so it's it's moral obligation to do something which in reality the uh, superpowers fail to do and the superpowers i'm focusing on because they are relevant i don't care if a small country fails mm. uh, because it doesn't really have an impact but if the superpowers fail then that has an impact mm. so do you think it's to a certain degree um pointing out those um those issues of certain people or countries in general is a um artist duty to a certain degree or it's it's just your your way of approaching it yeah i don't think there is uh there is uh, a definition of art and therefore not uh one institution or one person that should say what should be done or should not be done yeah um so i think it's more personal decision um mm -hmm. for me there is simply certain art where i would say fine that's more like design uh, so i look at it more like a, from a design angle and then say that's good or bad design mm. uh, and uh, other art is more uh, messages then i have to look at it from a messaging whether it gets it across and whether the the composition overall also is appealing or not um is there anything or maybe what's the what's the thing you struggle the most as an artist Maybe when you were start, you know, beginning, um, or just just now. Yeah, I mean, the uh, for me at the end of the day, the only thing I, where I struggle with, or let's state it differently, where I can do, a, uh, where I'm, I'm getting annoyed with myself is uh, drawing. Um, while I'm pretty good at drawing. But if I if I do something wrong sometime, it's a drawing mistake. Mm. The painting I think is is fairly easy. The issue can be a drawing mistake. Mm. And uh, like I just did in the painting behind me, I did a drawing mistake which I'm fixing. And uh, and that's annoying uh, because you kind of say Shh, I should know better. Yeah. Uh, and I should discover late in the process that i did a mistake right so uh but that's i think for me so I, I love drawing more than anything else 
uh, and I, uh, I'm, I think I'm pretty decent at it, but that's also where I would make a mistake, if at all, uh, and then and that's really the annoying part. Do you think you like it so much because of the struggle itself? There's something inherent in artists' lives than uh, the, the the struggle. That's there's need to be a little bit of it to for to make the art um, truthful. I think. Yeah, uh, I mean it. Uh, it is as everything is. If you want to struggle, it's just you. You move the pain point from one area to the other, right? So, for example. I, uh, when I was younger or earlier in oil painting, I mm. colors and finding the right colors could be a struggle. Mm. And now I don't, I don't really care about, uh, about colors because, uh, it's, I care more about the composition because the color will come and I can mm. do what I want with colors. I don't have to think about color. Uh, um, and uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I think it's always somewhere. The if if a painting succeeds or fails, it's always in the drawing, always in the composition. Have you thought about going into the painting? You know, just uh, just going for the painting straight away. Or I don't know, like Caravaggio, just going straight onto the canvas uh, with the paint without um, without the um, drawing stage. No, I always, I always uh, draw, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, yeah, even when I do sculptures, I draw. Mm. And uh, it's like a free. Uh, you're trying to draw it from different angles to get the uh, feeling of the three dimensional, um, you know, shapes of it, or just some um, really rough sketches of the sculpture itself. No more rough sketches of what I want to do, mm. and uh, that is quite interesting. Like for example, uh, I did a sculpture, which you see also on the website, which is Mephisto riding a poodle. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, now the the issue is uh, it's a king poodle. No, I don't have a king poodle, mm -hmm. uh, and there are not. Um, there are some photos of a king poodle online, but uh, uh, very few, and not the ones you need, right? So um, uh, now, when you do a sculpture, you can't start with something fluffy. You need to understand the skeleton, and you need to understand uh, the body. Mm -hmm. So to do that, I uh, basically um, started with uh, uh, another dog. Right, uh, where I found a 3D model, which um, was an online model, which I could turn around. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I built another dog first, which is similar in breed, but completely different from Poodle. Mm -hmm. And then when, it, when the dog was uh, finished, I then uh, changed uh, the, uh, the face or the head uh, to make it a poodle head and then added mm -hmm. afterwards uh, all the fur. Mm. And so basically my my dog, which I originally had, disappeared then after a while in a ton of, in a ton of fur. And all this is done in clay. Mm. And um, yeah, so, so that's the way you sometimes need to, to approach things, right? So it's a mm. bit... It's a bit daunting because you don't really know whether at the end of the day you will end somewhere, which mm. is okay. But it, it turns out most of the time to be good, right? But it shows you you need to understand the underlying thing what you're doing. At least I do, and I don't start with a big poodle form mm. and then uh, forget about the uh, the dynamics of the body. Mm. When you start a project, I don't know, maybe um, sculpture or the movie, painting, at the beginning, the first stage of the creation, do you see, do you see the uh, final uh, piece in your head that, at the beginning of the, the creation or is it more gradual that you kind of see where it goes and then go along with it? 
Yeah, I mean, in principle, you see, you have an idea what you want, mm. but you might still end somewhere different because it might not work. Mm. And uh, but you start with a clear idea, mm. uh, and yeah, and then you you let it let it give its impression back to you, and then you might change. Yeah, take you on a journey. Yeah, that's nice. That's like in all of the mediums, as you said, that when you were uh, struggling to find the right place for recording of the last files, you had to use different studio. So it's kind of like a any medium you would take, you always uh, encounter these um, setbacks that eventually might turn out to be blessing in disguise, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this was the best way of the, you could have, you know, make it. Yeah, no, no, it's, I mean, the creative, you always need to start with uh, an idea of where you're going, mm. which is logical, right? If you, if you stand in front of uh, your house and you don't know where you're going, you won't go anywhere, right? Uh, so you need to go somewhere. Uh, and then you might discover on the way that maybe there is a better route to take, so now you change, or maybe there mm. is... You see something, you say, oh, shit, actually, I want to go somewhere else now, and then you go somewhere else, which is all okay. Mm. Uh, but the important thing is that you started with an idea that you want to go somewhere. Mm. Yeah. Taking, um, speaking about artistic journeys, maybe I'll ask you the, the last questions. Uh, what do you think is art? Yeah, I think that's an impossible question, uh, <laughs> and you will get you will get gazillions of answers, and yeah. up to art is everything. No, so I think art uh, is just uh, for me. Art is a way of of expressing my thoughts. Hmm. That's the expression of yourself. Yeah, of my thoughts. Yeah. Of of what? My thoughts, my thinking. Oh, the thoughts. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. okay. Really thoughts. So yourself in a way as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, dog, uh, monsieur. It was a pleasure talking with you. And I hope the painting behind you goes really well. From what I can see, it's already nice. Nice composition. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think once I... Now that I fixed roughly my uh drawing mistakes mm. i'm sure can i, I will be was it? huh can i ask what was the mistake no i did the hand wrong mm, the hands are the most the hardest yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Always struggle I, with them. I somehow did them uh did them wrong and uh yeah and the hands are quite dominant so mm. that's why i needed to fix it but mm. they're starting starting to look okay now mm. Nice. Looking That's... forward to seeing the finished piece. Yeah, it will be, should be done by probably tomorrow or so. Hmm. Okay, tomorrow. pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, wish you a great and productive day. Yeah, I wish you the same. Huh? All the best. Thank you. Yes, Take thanks. Bye-bye.